All right, guys. So let's get ready for the class today. Uh, if you've already, you're already on your mat, let's come in a comfortable seated position. All right. So remember, when we're doing the yogic practice, and especially when it is for menstruation, let's assume that some of you today are on your menstruation and probably experiencing cramps. Or if this is a future understanding where you or somebody in your circle you know is going through heavy menstrual cramps, it is going to be helpful for them to imbibe some of the practices that we do in class today. The reason, one of the reasons being why we experience intense menstrual pain is because lack of oxygenation and lack of blood circulation, especially in the reproductive system, in your uterine muscles. So with the gentle practice of yoga, where we allow a little expansion to take place, where we allow the contractions to release, because the tendency of the muscles in this region is such that they tend to stay tight, that they tend to stay very shortened. And when we do the practices of yoga, which are gentler in nature, which are softer in nature, where a lot of breath is involved, it starts to release, it starts to expand, which as a result, releases the intense pain that you may experience. All right? So, looks like a lot of us are already ready and join in. Those who can please put their cameras on, it would be great so that I can interact with you. I can see if you're doing something wrong and I can correct you, yes? So let's keep it a two-way stream. If you can keep your cameras on, it would be great, all right? So starting off by being in a comfortable cross-leg position first, we will use this posture here to set ourselves. I hope you have a mat or a carpet laid out for you, something you can sit on comfortably. Once you are seated, you may just let your palms be rested on the lap or keep your palms upward towards the ceiling and gently start to close your eyes. As you close your eyes, start to shift your attention inside the body. Shifting the awareness within and connecting with your bodily sensations. Starting to scan your body with your mind's eye. Noticing if there are any tense parts in your body. As we know today, we're covering the topic of menstrual pain and it's possible so that some of you might be having your menstruation today. And if you feel that your abdomen, your back is a sensitive area right now, start to take your attention to that region and consciously allow it to relax. Just resting your awareness around your belly, lower abdomen, back muscles, the hips, inner thighs and groin. Just laying the awareness in this region right now so as to connect with it before we get ready for the class ahead. It's only a matter of shifting your awareness so that the benefit can be felt, so that your experience can be enhanced. Inhale to feel the belly. Take in the breath, gentle expansion there. Exhale to softly release out. Inhale through the nose, feeling the belly, take in the breath. Exhale to softly release out. Make sure you're only breathing through the nose. Once again, inhale into your belly. Gentle expansion in there. Exhale to softly release the breath. Okay, and now we will gently open up our eyes. Release out. Now, from here, let's start getting ready, preparing the body, giving gentle movement to our spine. Interlock your fingers and extend your arms up. Let your palms face open upward. Breathe. As you're in here, breathing into your chest, breathing into your belly, and exhaling to round the back and pressing your chest inward, your belly inward. Look how the spine is rounding. 
and let's take it up inhale open exhaling rounding the back again up inhale open exhale to round the back press your chin in arms forward and then slowly come back up to the top and take a moment and release your hands down we want to start giving it free movement in our spine yes because of course the affected areas are usually your lower back and your abdomen so let's start to direct the energy flow in this region and in the spine and we'll now also take the arms going up here and going in a circular manner going forward circle slow it and inhale moving very fluidly and freely exhale forward inhale up two more times same direction exhale forward inhale up one last time breathe out breathe in as you come back up and let's change the direction now going the other way exhale reverse your movement and up exhale rotate your body and come back freely moving forward up one last time there coming back up and allowing the hands to relax very nice now once you've come back out of the position you will simply hold the hands behind the back at the wrist or the forearms turn your body on to one side and let's take the head going down towards the knee inhale to come up change twist to the other side gently and bring the head down towards the knee inhale up center going for a forward fold again the same way and inhale and come back up great Now, as you are continuing to sit here in a cross-leg position, we will take one hand sliding out. Let your elbow bend in slightly. Let the second hand follow up and extend open. Let's stay here for three, two, one, and circling forward. See how this hand goes to the other side now, and the second hand follows back up. Lower elbow bending in for three, two. One circling forward and come back the same way and hand coming up, holding three, two, one. As you circle forward and switch, bring the arm up. Three, two, one. Just circle and now come back to the center. great and now from here we will separate our legs keep your legs out a bit wide check feet are hip distance or wider than hip distance apart okay being on your sit bones and your hands on the sides here we're going to simply now drop the knees right and left twisting out from the hip joint so simply drop your legs out to the right side watch when you do that how much space i've created to make it two right angles double 90 twist Hip to knee, knee to ankle on both sides, and this way we'll continue. Maintain that distance between the legs, and continue to twist from one side to the other. One side to the other. Okay, keep moving. Very nice. Freely rotating to the sides. Nice. Start to free up. these parts of the body as well tend to be really crampy many times the groinal region the inner thighs let's free it up let's go another six and back five maintain the distance four three two and last time great and come back out now once you come back let's take the feet joining and coming in for badhakonasana 
Okay. So once you've got your feet in front, we place the thumb swing in between the feet and the four fingers on the sides are holding out on the feet. Okay. So try not to join your feet. Instead, think of opening your feet like a book. The more you open from the feet, it also starts to loosen the inner thigh muscle. So we are not tightening here by pressing the feet together. Once you do this, you will start with a little flapping in the neck in Bhadrasana. Just a little gentle movement to prepare the hips for a little opening. Little few times here in Bhadrasana. Great. And now you may slow the speed and relax the movement. From here, we're going to raise the arms up. Inhale. Pull it up. One more breath here. Inhale and exhale. Lowering, but think like somebody's pulling your hands forward. So you want to try that extension and then let your hands reach wherever they reach on the floor. It could be right here. That's perfectly fine. And just stay wherever you are at your maximum. From there, just bending the elbows in little by little to lower your trunk towards the lips. Yes, just as much as you can come down, check. If you would like to drop your elbows down, do that. Breathe. Few easy breaths holding here. And then very slowly, let's turn up, walk the hands and come back out. All right. Okay. Now check here. Let's come up in a kneeling position on the mat. As you come in a kneeling pose, we're going to first come into Balasana or child's pose. So let your heels be rest, hips be rested on the heels, thighs together and sliding your hands forward, lowering the head down, relaxing. Nicely extend your hands. Rest your head on the floor for the child's pose. Balasan. Resting in your few breaths. Once you do this, notice the arms trying to stretch forward, the spine lengthening, which also allows your lower back muscles to start freeing up a bit here, right? Which tend to contract, which tend to spasm and tighten during menstruation. So we want to create a little length in the spine here. So resting your head down. And then slowly lift up. As you lift up, you're only going to walk with your hands to the sides. So walk your hands to the right side in the same position and then lower the head down. Stay here. Then inhale, lift up, switch, walk your hands to the other side and lowering it down. Great. Walk your hands and come back to the center. Once again, drop your head down. And then slowly release and come back up, right? So come on your fours now. Check, we'll be on our fours on the palms and knees and we'll take a shoulder twist in here. So with me, place your right palm in the front a little bit forward and let your left hand pass through the gap underneath as you slide very, very slowly, bringing the head and shoulder down. Resting on the ground and this other right hand can straighten up as you continue being here in the shoulder twist. You may even close your eyes here. Check how my hips and knees are in a straight line perpendicular to the ground. Then very slowly, let us bend the elbow, push. Pull the hand and come back up. Let us take now the left hand going forward and in the gap passing your right hand and lowering the head, the shoulder down and let's stay there. Open up your left hand fully and hold it there. Two easy breaths.
and then slowly release and push come back out great now from here you're going to tuck your toes push the ground walk your feet forward and come in here in a standing position let your knees be a bit bent and soft we're going to hold on to the elbows and allow the body to hang so notice how i kept my knees bent and the belly rested on the thighs and we're going to just sway the body from one side on to the other one side on to the other simply moving right to left let your knees be bent when your knees are bent your back is safe there is no tightness then pulling you up just swaying right to left left to right if you find it better to just open your hands and do this feel free so swaying side to side releasing all the stagnant energy stuck up in the body last three breathing two and come back center then swing your hands inhale coming up all the way to the top pulling up nicely lengthen slightly up and back exhale release bring your hands down come in tarasan for two to three breaths here and slowly release open right so in the beginning of the class i asked you to have a pillow a cushion or a bolster for now we would require a pillow a basic pillow which you sleep on or you could even take a blanket anything that you have around you around your house just quickly grabbing once again making a request for those who can keep their camera on it would help me to also understand what you're doing and connect with you so here i have my pillow i have a cushion and this we are going to place in the crease of the pelvis so have a look at how i'm doing this again very comforting for the pelvic muscles i'm placing the edge of the pillow here bending the knees and folding as you see i'm folding my knees are staying bent and once i fold the pillow stays held up between the trunk and the thigh so when i fold and hang loose the pillow is not going to fall because it's properly pressed and my knees are bent once i'm here i'm going to free open my head arms and spine and just be here what this is doing is it's adding that little compression which feels very comforting in the abdomen at the same time it is releasing the tightness in the back muscles and we are just allowing the blood to be directed towards the head without doing an inversion and staying here okay so let's go we will do this i'll do this once again with you those who have missed out taking your pillow here at the edge of the pelvis crease from where the hip folds hold it here and then allow your body to fold down folding down let the knees be bent to come keeping the knees bent then your belly will come resting on the thigh allow the trunk to fold you can do this with a pillow with a blanket as well a folded blanket and then hanging your head neck free let your arms hang maybe close your eyes if you like or keep it open open if you're dizzy few seconds we'll spend here a little bit more notice how your belly presses into the pillow and now very very slowly lift your head up first get your hands on the pillow release it out place it on the mat and take your hands come up slowly very good once you come up hands on the side take a moment in tarasan just stabilizing and recentering yourself okay great just remember always whenever you are practicing during menstruation whether it is right now or otherwise let your practice be soft slow and gentle let there be a lot of breath flow involved which will oxygenate your body well and release the cramped up muscles and over a period of time with regular yoga practice you will also start to see that the intensity of your pains become lesser yes 
Now we're going to further move open and go in for three four nasan here as we spread the legs apart. Say about three three and a half feet distance between your legs. Okay. Once you are set here, the hands on the waist. Let's start with the right side. Turn open your right foot. You turn your toes out, and left remains as it is. Open up your arms onto the sides. Keep both the knees straight, and we will simply bend the body and let your hand reach, whether it reaches the thigh or the shin, but just try not to press your knee down. Lightly get your hand. Now this hand can stay up or it can stay on the waist. Pressing your chest shoulder open. Let's stay here. Few breaths. Simply breathing through the nose. And very slowly slide your hand and come back up. Turning that foot in and open the left side nicely. Open arms, simply drop down the same way, letting your hand reach either the thigh or a bit lower. Second hand stays up or on the waist, chest shoulder open. Keep your chin a little bit inward to the chest so it is not uncomfortable. The neck. Last few seconds here. And slowly slide, release, and come back up. Very nice. Now check. Let your hands be on the waist. We'll go for a variation of Parshvatonasan. Turn open your right foot and let your back foot come at a 45 degree angle. So the back foot toes are also trying to face forward. Okay. Now from here, you can keep your hands on the waist or you can interlace your fingers. We're going to go in for a forward fold. Let's lift the chest open and start to fold onto the leg in the front. We're keeping both the knees straight, folding. Even if the body doesn't go fully down, that's perfectly fine. You're looking towards the toes or the top of your mat. Allow your arms to open this way or simply keep it on the waist. Taking five more breaths here. And again, pull with the hands and slowly bring the body back up. Hands on the waist. Turn that foot in. Let's again now do the same feet arrangement. Left foot open. Back leg at a 45 degree angle. Check you're facing the front leg now. Same placement of your arms, what you did earlier. Inhale. Exhale. Start to fold onto the front leg. As you fold in once again, gazing towards your toes or looking towards the top of the pan. Maybe open your arms this way or hands on the face. Five more breaths here. And very slowly inhale, pull the body and come back up. Turning that foot back in, great. And let the feet come in once again. And from here, you will simply go into a forward fold. Keeping your hands behind the back, interlace. Bend the knees, a variation of Uttanasana. Allow the trunk to fold onto the thighs. Hanging your head free. Arm shoulders relaxing. And then slowly lift your head up, bring your palms down and simply bring your knees down one by one. Okay. And now from here, we come back onto a pose and move into the boat asana, the pigeon pose. Okay. Now for this one as well, I'm going to show you in case you're not able to rest comfortably, you can make use of a pillow or a cushion under your hip to balance your body out better. So let's see first the alignment of the pose. You will take for one leg forward, so the knee goes forward, sliding as much as you can. Allow the back leg to space out. This foot here can be the heel is near your groin. Yeah. Now suppose some of you who have tight hips, for example, and your body is here and the hip is not ready to rest down, then you can take a cushion or blanket, pillow, pull it under that hip 
fill up the gap and allow the hips to sit in. This will make your experience of Kapotasana a lot more comfortable, help you to benefit from it without struggling in the pose, okay? So if you have that large gap, put a cushion, sit on it, and then you bring your elbows down. Get your forearms down, let your back leg be straightened out nicely. Keep your shoulders relaxed. You may just be here, or if you're comfortable to go down, turn your elbows out, rest your head on the back of your hands. Releasing the tight hip muscles here, the tight glute muscles here, which are also connected to your menstrual pains. The entire hip abdominal region requires that relief during menstruation. Using pigeon posture for the same, let your eyes be closed. Be here for a few breaths. Then very slowly now, let's lift the head up, place the palms to the sides and push the body up. And as you come up from the pigeon, watch how you will lift up, similar to that of a Bhujangasana. Lengthen your spine and look forward for three more. Great. And then you may push, bring your back leg in and send it back. Change your side. Let's do the same thing on the other side. Bring the other knee forward. Again, if you have that gap to fill, please place your cushion. Straighten the leg at the back. Let your toes point to the back of the room. Your heel is by the side of the groin. Same way, bring your forearms down. Okay, you may just stay here or if you're comfortable, go down. If you feel it's too much to go down, again, you can place a cushion as well in front of you for the head to rest on. That's also another option. Let the body relax. Notice how the belly is rested on the leg. Releasing the tight hip muscles, back muscles. Gently stretching open the groinal region. Very, very effective posture, Kapotasan. Continue to stay with your breath here for a few more. And then slowly inhale, lift your head up, place your palms by the sides. Let us push and rise up. Lengthening, hold it here for three more. Two. And press back. Send your leg back. And we're going to go in child's pose now, but with the help of our pillow or bolster. So, for example, if you have your pillow, which is like this, similar to mine. You can take a single one or a double one, pull it all the way up towards your pelvis and then hold it here as you fold your body and extend. If you want to add one more thicker cushion or pillow for your face, do that or simply be here. Suppose you have a bolster, you can then take your bolster between the thighs, separating your knees and resting your body. Okay, so using something like a bolster, maybe one pillow, two pillows to let your body rest. And place one side of your face here and see how the hands are relaxed by the side. Keep your elbows bent. Placing one cheek on the pillow. Feel free to double up your pillow or cushion so that you feel that comfort when you fold and rest forward. Again, child's pose, a very effective one to release the cramps. 
especially the one with the props. So the body gets more comfortable, the mind starts to relax. And when the mind relaxes, it has its effect on the body. Now let's change the face onto the other side. So if you had, suppose your left cheek, place it on the right or vice versa. And then very slowly, push the ground, walk your hands and come back up. Very nice. Okay. You can keep your uh, pillows cushioned down to the side for a bit. And let us come in a sitting position in Parivritta Janushim Shasana. So for example, I'm keeping my right heel pressed in towards the groin or pulled in towards the groin. And the left leg is opened out to the side. Check. One leg open, one leg bent in keeping your heel towards the ground. Suppose you find it difficult to sit this way and your body keeps rolling back, back is not straightening. You can take that cushion or pillow and sit on it so it gives you some height and you get elevated. That will help you to move better in the posture. All right? So see if you need that cushion under the hip, leg is opened up to the side and we will keep the foot active. Toes curled inward. All right? Now, one hand on the waist here. And the open leg, same hand. So if it's your left leg open, left arm will slide, slide either on the mat or on the leg and move the body. Extend. Your maximum is your maximum. We're not forcing ourselves, not forcefully reaching the toes. Be gentle. Be accepting of where the body is, how much ever the body wants to move. Okay? You don't have to push extra respecting the body and its ability, especially when you're during your menstruation. Only when it starts to feel the ease does it start responding and releasing the pain. Once you're here, let the body be bent. Few more. We won't bother lifting this hand so that we keep the arm relaxed. You can just press your shoulder back, elbow back, chest open. Chin slightly towards the chest. Simple breathing through the nose. And inhale, come back up. Once you come back up, place your palms in front of the foot, walk your hands. And going in the front, so let that one leg remain open on the side. You walk your hands in the front and holding forward. So you can hold to your maximum. See how many of the steps your hand is ready to take. Lowering your head slightly inward. Stay. And inhale, lift up, walk it back up. Okay, now let's switch. So you take your hand under the leg, which is straight, bend from the knee, pull it in, and let's change the side. Switching to Parivritta Janushitasan on the other side. Okay, open up. Okay, set yourself once again. See if you need that cushion under the hip. It just keeps your spine nicely lifted. All right, curl your toes in, hand on the waist, slide your hand on the leg or slide your hand on the mat. Begin to bend the body. Okay, bending the body to the side, elbow, shoulder, pull back, let the trunk chest be opened up, chin slightly in towards the chest, find your maximum point and stay there. You can even bend your elbow and maybe rest it on the head if you like. your last couple of breaths.
inhale, slowly slide and come back up. Great. Once you finish with this, we will walk the hands again in the front, moving forward with the palms, walking, walking to your maximum point and lowering the head down and stay there. Let the elbows be straight and shoulders pushed back. And slowly inhale, lift your head and walk your hands coming back up. Very nice. Slowly release and come back up. Great. Now, just the way you are seated already, you have one leg open, one leg bent. We're now going to take both the legs opening up. And for this one especially, I would recommend all of us to be seated on a folded blanket, a cushion or a pillow so that your spine can stay straight and your body can stay balanced and comfortable with both legs open out. Okay, now it is again not necessary that we open our legs very wide. You can just keep it whatever is comfortable for you. And just remember to keep your toes active because so many times the leg just falls to the side and that will pull your back down. So check that your feet are properly on the heels, toes are pointing up, knees are pointing upward, not sideways. And let's set ourselves up. Suppose you are sitting on a cushion. And even then, your back feels like it's pulled down and it's not straightened up. In that case, you will bend your knees slightly. You lift your knees up and stay bent a little bit. Okay? That's an option. Otherwise, keep it as this. We're going to move for Chakti Charanasan. So, interlace your fingers in front of the chest. And let's start moving in a circular manner from the hip with the body. Long with me. Going forward, circle and come back. As you circle, let's combine the breath to this movement. So every time you go forward, simply exhale through the nose. Inhale while you come back. Exhale going forward. Inhale back. Very nice. Another three circles here. Good. Two. And one. Finish with that circle center and change your direction. Reverse circles from the other side going forward and back. Very nice. Combining breath to the movement. As you move forward, you exhale. Coming back up, you inhale. Really nice. Going for the last three. Keep it slow. Feel how the body is reaching forward and coming back. Two. And slow. Completing this circle. Come back up to the center. Take a moment here. Breathe. Check how your back feels. Check how the breath is. Once you come back, we're going to go the last one in this position, which is the Upavishta Purasana or the wide leg forward. So again, you maintain your legs here. Now you have an option of having your cushion, pillow, bolster in front of you for support underneath. Or if you don't have anything around you, you can simply just walk with your hands and do it. But this is always a, um, an option to keep in mind for now or later. Even when you're practicing on your own, you can use props such as these for folding on in any, like we did in the standing forward fold, we did it in child's pose, and now is an option to do it in Upavishta Purasana. So it gives a comforting feeling, almost like a hug to your own self when we reach out forward and rest the body here on the bolster. Okay, so this is an option right now. If you don't have it, you will simply walk your hands forward, walk it in, maybe rest your elbows down. You could also rest your elbows on a height like a bolster. If you have yoga blocks, use that or a push. Okay? Not forcing yourself, just going as much as your body allows you to. See, wherever you are, maybe if you like to walk your hand, lower the head and stay. Whatever your position may be right now, just a bit of a fold in the front and allow the body to rest. 
Maybe close your eyes now and soft inhale and exhale. Last few breaths here. Slowly push the ground. Inhale, rise up and walk your hands one by one coming to the back. Straighten your spine first. Take two to three seconds with a straight spine. Great. And we will bend the legs. How do we do that? Taking your hands underneath the legs first. Pull it in one by one. Slowly coming back and come in a cross leg position. Once you come in a cross leg position, we will once again slide the hands very normally forward. Just holding, releasing any tension in the back. And so we Walk your hands, come back. Okay, great. Now check here. You will place your, whether it's a pillow, maybe you can take two pillows, bolster. Vertically, preferably choosing something which is longer, vertically behind. We're going for what is known as the recline twist. So for example, have this pillow here and we're going to keep the feet wide my back is to the pillow and notice my knees are bent, feet are wide. Okay, you can do this along with me step by step. Let's drop the knees to one side. So I'm dropping it to my right. Remember the double 90 twist we did in the beginning. So it's just that double 90 twist here, making sure your legs are making this right angle. You can push the ground, reset yourself so that now you can twist back. So if I've dropped the legs to my right side, I'm going to turn back and let the body from the right side turning back. See how my hands are on the sides of the pillow. Slowly resting down, coming in. Either you place the side of your face or you place the head. Okay. However you like, resting in, hands by the sides. If you can relax into it, do it. A short hold here. Keeping your legs in the twist. Allowing the spine to rotate. Resting it down a few seconds. And then slowly push the ground. Inhale and come back out. Then we will do the same thing on the other side. So let's go together. Drop the legs now, maybe to your left side or whichever. Same way, double 90, right angles, keeping the legs, turning from the side, hands on each side of the pillow and bend the elbows to bring the body down. Very slowly, let's push, come back up and return to the center. You can keep your prop out on the side for a moment and lie down on the back and we do a simple twist here in a supine position. So lay back. Now remember, when you're practicing yoga asanas by yourself on days of menstruation, we want to, as I already mentioned, keep it slow and gentle. At the same time, keep in mind to avoid Practices such as inversions, wherein you are supposed to raising your body upside down in a posture like Sarvangasana, for example, or doing a headstand, avoiding those intense practices, avoiding core centric practices, so as to not disturb the flow of your apanavayu. Okay, apanavayu is the downward flow of energy that flows in our body. So you want to stay away from that. Hence, we will not do inversions 
wherein which even might include something like the setu bandhasan or the bridge pose because in the setu bandhasan your hip goes higher than the level of your face or your chest hence we will keep our full spine hip ground level all right so as you come on the mat just a small thing for you to keep in mind that's why i share now you will just bring your feet wide stay about mat distance let's keep it to the edges and let your knees and legs be wide All right. We'll open up the hands to the sides. Simple twist here in Jatara Parivartanasan. A very relaxing, enjoyable spinal twist. Dropping your knees to the right side. Make sure you have this distance, and your feet are not moving. Just dropping the knees. And same way, twist and drop it to the left side. Moving your body from one side and to the other. Simply right to left with the knees, going slowly side to side. There is no rush. Enjoy your time in the twist. Simply right to left, left to right. If what would be better and enjoyable for you is to coordinate the movement with the pace of your breath. So every time you have an exhale, you drop your knees to the side. Every time you have an inhale, you come back to the center. So this way, continue to move with the legs, and notice how you start feeling relaxed when you coordinate movement and breath. Stress is a big factor in causing or elevating menstrual cramps, in delaying menstrual cramps, or affecting the flow of your menstruation. and using yogic practices we want to also release the bodily stresses which are held up blockages in the body which are held up for a while once that starts releasing your menstrual health starts to improve greatly going for your last round of the twist here and once you finish get your knees and feet in together just bring the knees to chest for a gentle pavan muktasan have your hands go around the legs hold knees to chest and exhaling lift your head up to the knee just for one breath and slowly dropping your head back down great all right just take a moment come up in a sitting position we're going for a final resting posture so you can choose to do a plain shavasan with your body flat on the mat or i would suggest to take a pillow or a bolster underneath so your back is a lot more rested and you can choose to have your legs in one or two options so for example i have a pillow single double or a bolster i'm going to keep my entire back entire spine rested on it hips on the ground though once you rest your back fully notice how the lower back is feeling relaxed and comforted by being on the prop you can choose to keep your legs straight and rest normally here in shavasan or you can also choose to keep your legs in vadha pose by joining the feet and dropping the knees to the sides so see which of the two options is more comfortable for you both will be very comfortable and relaxing see that you can hold it for a while so, so see which leg position works best for you okay having your entire back body relaxed arms rested on the sides facial muscles softened up if you're wearing a spectacles glasses please remove them keeping your eyes closed and start to rest in as you keep your eyes closed notice the awareness starting to go inside the body moving your awareness within the body and relaxing fully well notice how the weight of your body is starting to surrender into the prop without any control without any resistance letting your spine letting the back rest into the props letting your hips and legs relax fully into the mat 
Notice how your head and neck is also supported on the pillow or cushion. Keeping your arms spaced out by the sides. Shoulders, neck relaxing. Taking your awareness to the chest, to the belly. Relaxing the abdomen. Consciously relaxing your pelvis, groin, inner thighs. Moving your mental awareness down all the way to your right leg. From the thigh all the way towards the foot. Moving your awareness all the way down towards your left leg. From the thigh all the way to the toes. Being completely rested now. From your head to feet. In the same lying down position, if you like, place one palm on your belly. And that way we start connecting to the breath here. It's only once your body learns to relax can we actually let the breath flow become effortless. It's only in a still body does the breath flow freely. So if you have your palm rested on your belly, notice how with every inhalation, there's a little expansion taking place in your abdomen. As if the balloon fills up with the air, similar with your belly. And as you exhale, the breath very gently releases out of your belly. Stay with this awareness of the expansion of the belly and general contraction. Just being aware of this natural flow of your breath is enough for your body, body to feel easy, for the pains to start smoothing away, for your mind to start getting rested. Nothing relaxes like the soft, effortless flow of your breath. In the same resting posture, let's start giving a little counts to our breath, moving into Samavritti Pranayama, which can very well be done in this lying down position. Samavritti is nothing but equal breathing, where you have equal counts to your inhalation and exhalation. I will be giving you three counts to inhale and exhale. Let's do it together. Simply inhaling in for one, two, three. Exhaling for three, two, one. Inhaling for one, two, three. Exhaling for three, two, one. Inhaling for one, two, three. Exhaling for three, two, one. Inhaling one, two, three. Exhaling for three, two, one. Let's do one last round here. Inhaling for one, two, three. Exhaling for three, two, one. And relax. Breathing normal once again. Continue to stay rested in your Shavasana for the last couple of seconds. Enjoying the comfort of your body on the mat, on the props. Taking this moment here in Shavasana to express gratitude to your body, to the ability of your body to move. Expressing gratitude to the breath that you have, that keeps you alive, that keeps you oxygenated. 
expressing gratitude to the moment right now, to your practice. And very gently begin to move your fingers, your toes. Slowly start to bend your knees and turn your body onto the right side, preparing yourself to come up. Just simply turn to the side, push the ground and sit up straight. And as you sit up, keep your eyes closed. Let us first just simply come in a normal cross leg position. Maintain the closed eyes. We'll end with three chants of home together. Let's take the palms in front of the chest. Keep your eyes closed. Three rounds, take a long breath here first. Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Slowly begin to rub your palms, creating the warmth. And cup it to your eyes, cup it to your face. Take your palms to your neck, shoulders. Take it across your arms. Take it behind on the back, lower back, hip, side of your legs. And then gently open up. Thank you very much. Thank you and a happy Women's Day once again. Very grateful for all of you who joined and I hope you enjoyed and could relate to the practice. Thank you.